Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use vertex color support in Grease Pencil to make your animations look much cooler. To begin with, let's look at vertices in general. Every Grease Pencil object is made up of vertices, as you can see when you switch to edit mode. The little dots indicate the vertices and this is what we will be affecting when we use the tint brush to color. To do this, you will need a base shape created by a material as usual, like these three shapes here. One is a simple stroke, the second is a closed shape drawn with a fill brush, and the third here is a shape with the stroke that has been filled with the fill tool. Now when I select the tint brush and the color, you can see it only affects the strokes in each of these examples. This is because the tint brush has three different modes, affect stroke, affect fills, and affect strokes and fills. But even when you switch modes, you will see that the fills are affected differently to the strokes. Where the strokes get a gradual, more controlled surface area colored, the fill shapes switch entirely to a new color. So doing it this way will not allow smooth shading, gradients or any cool effects. This leaves us with one workable option, color everything with a stroke base. So I have this sketch here of a face and I'm going to be using this as an example animation to explain the rest of what vertex colors can do. So let's start by coloring it in with strokes and a material color. You will always need a base like this for the tint function to work over. I suggest you separate your fill layer from your line work layer just so you can avoid complication later on in the animation stage. Now a cool thing is that the tint brush allows us to create our own custom palettes instead of depending on individual materials. This allows for easy color management and a palette structure, but it does have the drawback of lacking the editability of using materials. You can't edit the colors once they have been laid down, you can only color over them, and there is no capability of editing colors in batches like you could when you use materials. Keep this in mind and let's create our own palette. When you click the color bar up here, you'll first see the default palette from Blender itself. Click the X icon to the right of the title bar and add a new palette. You can choose colors off the color wheel freehand and add them to your palette using the plus icon below. Use a minus icon to remove colors that you don't want anymore. If you have a concept reference or predetermined colors, click the color bar below the wheel and add your color values or hex codes into this area here. You can also choose to color pick from this area as well. So this will be helpful if you have brought your reference into Blender itself. Once this is done, name your palettes and use the color swatch icon to the left to browse all the palettes that you have. Now you can just select the colors you want, lock all the other layers and color over the fill layer that you have for whatever area that you need to be coloring over. So you can color this over as many times as you want and the finer that your stroke base is, the more control you will have with the tint brush. Sometimes the tint brush will create some sharp artifacts and it won't really draw precise lines, so feel free to switch between using materials and the solid brushes to draw in any tiny details. Now if you did separate your line art and fills into two separate layers, go ahead lock your fill layer, move on to your line art layer and use the tint brush over the strokes to change the colors of the line art itself. You can also keyframe the gradients that you make to animate them like I've done here with the hair. But you have to remember that coloring with the tint function on a new frame will not automatically create a keyframe, so you will have to duplicate keyframes to manually create an animation. Whereas before, usually when you're using the solid brush, if you draw on a new frame and you have the auto keyframe selection on, it will create a new frame for you. It won't have work like that with the tint function and you will just end up drawing over your previous frame and ruining all the work and progress that you made if you're not being careful. So I hope that this inspires you to try it out and I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Here's the final animation that I got done. The files for this animation are available to download for free. Just click the link in the description if you want to mess around with it. Also consider joining our Discord family if you want to hang out with our team here at Motion Miracles and other creatives just like you. Like and subscribe for more and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.